ma'am. Uh, yeah. Dr. Okay. Chitra, uh, I'm happy to be here and meet all of you. Uh, so I'm going to start now. Sorry. Excuse me. Actually, primarily you have to thank Namrata. Even I have to thank her for being in this. Oh, no, uh, come on, everybody. It's it's a whole team effort. Yes. So um, I actually was told that uh, there be many topics uh, about formulae and other things. So I instead decided that I would talk about my observations in my practice with the IOL Master 700 and what difference it has made in the practice. So I'll uh, tell you a little bit about my journey. When I started working in the late 90s, about 97, 98, we had the Allegan Humphrey uh, uh, a scan and we had to be so careful ob observing from the side to see that we don't have any sort of uh, you know, pressure on, on the cornea, making sure I just touch only the tear film. And then suddenly in um, you know 2001, two things changed a lot for me. But in the beginning, we had very few phaco surgeons doing foldables, we had very little refractive surgery happening. So there was always this there, there was never this thing about that I shouldn't have a number later. There was no concept of refractive cataract surgery. It was more about the, the whole marketing was more about going to office immediately. They were told, okay, you can go home, take off your patch and go. Some, some, some doctor would even put a patch, just say, okay, you can just wear the dark glasses and go straight to office. There was a lot of that happening. And so therefore, um, the whole uh, you know, concept was a bit different. <clears throat> But there always was a need for multifocus. There was always a small bunch of people who said, I, I, I don't want to wear specs. And that started to grow over time. And therefore, there was a definite need for an accurate biometer. So in 2001, I think towards the end of uh, 2001, we made the switch. And um, it was a huge change because all of a sudden, it, it didn't matter who was doing the A-scan. I uh, didn't have to recheck anything and suddenly all that operator dependence just went, all the variable results went away. Of course, they didn't go away because if you had a tougher, harder lens, then you still had to be a bit careful. But the refractive surprises in a standard cataract were gone. And then, of course, because of that, we found that we had to shift over to uh, immersion far, far faster than we, we actually would have liked to. I mean, because with immersion, it was a big sea change from going from a simple A scan. So the early IOL masters that we used in the early two, in the early 2000s, between 2001 and uh, around 2010, uh, is that we had to learn uh, tips and tricks of how to get get around a posterior sub capsular cataract, we'll go a little on the side and try and shoot and things like that. Mature ones were, were of course, really hard to do. Signal to noise ratio was an important aspect of the whole thing. So we had to quickly shift to immersion because of that. There were still refractive surprises we saw. In 2009, we shifted uh, to the to uh, the accommodative IOLs, which we used for about uh, three or four years. And then somehow they just went out of vogue. But in 2009, when we were using those, we shifted to holiday two which, uh, I mean, we had to ac actually make sure really accurate because this was the only lens that came in uh, 0.25 jumps. And so therefore you couldn't even really blame the lens. You know? So it just had to be so accurate. We did uh, topography for every case. And it was a great learning uh, experience. I'm, I'm not saying that that lens was great, but it really taught me a lot about A-scans. So, um, so the IOL Masters 700 uh, compared to what we had with the 500 is a huge, it's, it's a sea change. It's like all those tougher, uh, all the tough ones we had, we used to always get stuck, but it's actually like moving from a car to an SUV when, when you're on a rough road. It just takes every single cataract so easily into its stride where it's a hard cataract it's black it's white it's a psc dense anything it just does a fantastic job so of course uh, for us what is what is also important is uh, that that the keratometry is now improved so we don't have to do a topo also in every case because for us uh, in our setup what we do is if there's any one the 0.6 0.7 K, we immediately try to switch over to a 
like a toric lens. So in my EDOFs and in my toric tri, I mean in my trifocals, we are nearly at 75 to 80 percent toric because of an accurate is um, K like you know reading. So anyone over 0 0.7, 0 0.75 gets uh, if if your if your incision is not going to be in the same uh, axis, then we switch over to a toric lens. So with with my EDOFs where I use the use the mini well, um, I'm probably about 85 uh, percent toric. So that's where we've had a great sea change, even in uh, fixation check, which I think is a fantastic thing that they have on the IOL Master 700. <clears throat> so if you don't get a fixation, it's uh, very clear with my staff. You don't, if you don't have a fixation check on, as in you're not on the fovea, you recheck it again. And <clears throat> for us, that is the key to everything because that is the difference uh, our uh, like you know fixation is one and the second is that the case have to be really matching and so therefore for us that's the real difference between choosing a toric and choosing a spherical uh, spherical iol with the iol master 700 it has really saved us time because of not having to do a topo in every case all the formula that we've had and seen and everything is fine, but we still tend to switch uh, to the Barrett formula because I've tried everything else and I just find that this is really accurate. Of course, you've had a whole uh, talk on this, so I, I, I won't go in uh, into the, like the details of it, but it's been really helpful. <clears throat> in our uh, practice, as I said, the fixation check is our number one thing. We always make sure that we have a perfect fi uh, fixation. The IOL Master 700 has made it very repeatable and quick. The keratometry has helped tremendously in choosing IOLs. The cataracts now are immersion rate is less than 1% uh, now. So there's practically none at all. It's very repeatable. Even if we have a new optom it's very fast and it just makes the whole workflow really quick so in the main reasons for incorporating an iol master 700 was number one it's a real workhorse we've uh, had them right from the beginning and they're built like tanks anyone who uses it even if it's mishandled anything it just keeps working all our like iol masters have been chucked aside only because of uh, because of Zeiss not being able to hand us parts or saying that now it's obsolete and you have to like you know get it out but we've never had a non-working machine it's just something outstanding right from the first IOL master of 2001 they have never given us a day's trouble so I in fact had a lot of options of choosing these a scans and though the IOL master might be a little bit more expensive it's worth every penny because it never gives you a bad day. The other thing is that it's extremely reliable in all the measurements. Of course, because of the fixation check, it's really, really easy to look at. I mean, to, to be sure that you're on the right track. The issue here is that we have got crazy expectations nowadays. Even after telling a patient that this lens will fit into a bag which is hanging in the middle of your eye, we're not sure whether we went plus we have jumps of 0.5s. So we're not, we will try our best to make sure that you don't have any powers at the end of it. Yet the expectations are extremely high. In fact, as we move to extended depth of focus lenses, as I said, uh, we are doing a large study on, uh, on the mini well actually, because in my opinion, that's the one lens that gives you very close to trifocal uh, like, you know, results. The only uh, problem there being that with an extended depth of focus of that kind that is as expensive as a trifocal, the only issue there is number one, if you go hyperopic, you're gone. Because he's got, even though they may see far, far vision really well, it's very, it's the, like, you know, the near side just drops to N14, N18. So it's, it's, so they're very unhappy. Second point about extended depth of focuses like that, which uh, offer good near vision is that strangely, if you go to minus 0.5 on the sphere, suddenly they say, I can't see far at all. And you have your near vision. What happens is that the near vision is spectacular. They're all N6, but then they can't see far and they get really upset. 
If you have a sill which is 0.75 or more, then again, there's that thing, oh, doctor is not very clear. So with lenses like the mini well, you have to be extremely ac accurate. But once you, once you have that level of accuracy where you're within 0 to 0.25 on the sphere, um, 0 to minus 0.25 on the sphere, and you're within half, half a cylinder of uh, cylinder, I mean, half a sill on the toric, what happens is that they are extremely happy after that because they have no, like it literally becomes like a, like a natural eye. So I'll be, uh, I'll try to give that study within the next month or two. I'll, uh, that's a fairly large study and we've gained a lot from that. And the more important thing is that we've got really accurate with our A scans only because that lens is very, very difficult to, uh, you know, kind of to make sure that everything has to be absolutely perfect, which I find that with the trifocal that I've used from probably 2016 or so, I found that that's a bit more forgiving. But even then, when I'm uh, all these years that I've used the Toric, I mean, the Zeiss trifocals, again, I just uh, did a recent study on that. I found that about 85 to 90% of them were Toric. And uh, one thing must be said about Zeiss and it's... Uh, trifocal lenses that this plate haptic works like magic. I mean, there's, it once it's in and it's the right place, it's bang on every single time. And there's no, there is no rotation of the lens at all. I think it's because probably because the rings are on the like, posterior surface, but it really makes all the effort of doing a good A scan really worth its while. Thank you. Thank you so much.